Okay, so I do not like Bitcoin right now, but there's more to it than just the headline. So let's talk about it. Romance for lovers only. This is the Hey Ed YouTube channel. I am your host, moderator, and all around nice guy, Edward Anderson. I'm not a financial advisor, so don't construe anything that I mentioned in any, any of my videos as financial advice. Always do your own research before doing anything with your money. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about Bitcoin and why I think that at this moment in time, Bitcoin is not something you want to be buying. Not financial advice, of course, but I'm going to give you my opinion, and I want you to kind of listen to my logic on this and see whether you agree with me or not. So as I'm recording this, it's about halfway through the day on Friday, January 13th. And let's take a look at what uh, Bitcoin is doing at the moment. Okay, so here I am on CoinMarketCap and Bitcoin at the moment is trading at uh, 43,600 and it's down 5% over the past uh, 24 hours. So let's take a look at a few charts of Bitcoin and so that I can kind of lay the groundwork for my argument. Now I'm going to start with the bigger picture and then we're going to zero in. Okay, so let's start by taking a look at the big picture on Bitcoin. This is the lifetime chart uh, on Bitcoin, and you can kind of see uh, the history here. And you can see uh, the massive uh, pumps that I had uh, during the course of the last uh, few years. Okay, so you can see that the really big uh, modern day version of this uh, uh, coin started back in 2020 when it broke out of that uh, very long you know, base there. Had that massive pump, pump up. A big sell off, then another big pump up, big massive sell off down. Now this this uh, this arrow to the right here, this, this this last big sell off, that was really the throes of the crypto winter that we were in for a solid two and a half years there. And this last arrow on the right here, this kind of reflects what's been going on over this past year. So let's take a look at that. This is a one year chart, and you can see that in the past year, now I'm rounding out these numbers, okay. So uh, a year ago, it was trading at around the 20,000 level. Uh, and then very recently, it hit a high of 48,000, just under 48,000. Okay, I rounded up, right? And the next really big support level is just 32,000. Okay, but let's take a little closer look and let's zero in and see what it's been doing in the past month. Okay, here we go. Um, now you can see that relatively speaking, in terms of percentage moves, uh, it has quieted down over this past month. Now, now things here look pretty dramatic, you know, 42,000 to 47,000. Okay, so numerically wise, that's pretty big, right? It's a $5,000 difference. But really percentage wise, it's not that big. And it's been a really sloppy move. Now, everybody knows uh, that the really big uh, news uh, that was anticipated in the crypto space anyway, was the decision on whether or not to approve uh, the Bitcoin ETFs. And there were 12 of them out there waiting for their approvals to be met. And as time went on, uh, the consensus grew uh, that the approvals were going to be passed. So both the retail market, you know, the, the average you know, individual out there, as well as institutions started to, you know, acquire Bitcoin in anticipation of these Bitcoin ETF approvals. Uh, so leading up to this news, uh, Bitcoin is having a pretty big run. Okay, and then this week, the news is passed. So th this is the one week chart. And you can see here uh, that uh, about midway through the week, uh, it, it made a big spike up and then it plateaued. And then we're just waiting around for the news. Uh, then the news came up and, and see this blow off top here. This is when we had that notorious uh, a tweet, that big tweet that came out. Well, it's not a tweet. I guess it, it, you have to call it a post on X, right? In my opinion, this is going to turn out to have been a scandal. Um, I do not think personally, uh, that the X account for the SEC was hacked. I think the SEC did this on purpose, uh, but that's just one man's opinion. We'll see uh, what shakes out. I think there are certain people uh, in our government, our certain government officials, and you know the guy I'm talking about, right? I think uh, th this I think this guy is corrupt as the day is long, uh, but, but it had that spike up. But then when they corrected the tweet, saying that, no, we had not really approved this yet, we had the massive sell-off. But then the following day, they they did uh, officially approve the ETF. And since then, it has been selling off. Now, remember, uh, one of the cardinal rules in trading is it's never about the news. It's always about the reaction to the news. So this is a textbook example of a sell the news event. Pretty much everyone who wanted to buy Bitcoin because of this news already owned it. So once the news uh, was announced, that just left profit takers. And that's what's going on at the moment. And you'll see that in the past 24 hours, remember this is uh, January 13th, uh, it is having a pretty ugly day. 
Now, I didn't spend a lot of time going uh, over the important support levels and resistance levels. You can scroll back uh, uh, in the video if you want to, you know, uh, you can scroll back and pause it in case you want to watch it. But let's talk about one particular chart to talk about some important levels. Okay, so let's revisit the one year chart here uh, on Bitcoin. Now, oh, and by the way, by the way, a little correction. I think I said I, this is January 13th. Today is January 12th. So I apologize for that. It's January 12th. Okay, so. Um, these are the important levels on Bitcoin uh, as per the uh, one year chart. Now, the next important support level on uh, Bitcoin is 32,000. Then beyond that is 20,000. I kind of, I, I seriously doubt that it's going to see 20,000, but the upside resistance there is, is 48,000. I round it out, right? It's, it's, it's really like 47 and change. Now, the reason why I don't like Bitcoin at the moment, that's the key phrase right here at the moment, uh, is that the downside risk is much bigger than the upside potential. And it really comes uh, down to your time frame, okay? Uh, I said in my previous video that I think everybody should own a little bit of Bitcoin. Okay, well, yes and no, right? If you are in retirement or you're close to retirement, Bitcoin is probably not the best candidate for you uh, to be in because Bitcoin could sell off uh, percentage-wise quite a bit here before it has its next big pump. But, no, but if you're a younger person uh, or middle-aged, um, uh, I think this would be a wonderful product because I do think that at some point in time, Bitcoin is going to see probably a, a million dollars a coin, uh, but it's not going to happen very quickly. And it's going to be a, a wild ride between here and there. Uh, so as something to, to have in your portfolio, I think Bitcoin is a product you do want to incorporate at least to a small degree. But if you're looking for, you know, an outsized performer, Bitcoin is much less attractive today than other cryptos. Think of it this way. Um, the way I would describe it is Bitcoin has been civilized now. <laughs> you know, so whereas, you know, up to a year ago, Bitcoin was considered, you know, the product of the, you know, the, the maverick or rugged individualist, you know, wanting to live outside of the system, you know, uh, but now they have taken Bitcoin and they, and they, and they've civilized it. Okay. It's like, you know, some rich couple adopting some raggedy, you know, young orphan and they're bringing it into their house. They put shoes on it and they, they dress it up real nice and they give it etiquette lessons and they've civilized that, that, that orphan um, and and you know uh, and and that's what in essence you know the street wall street and you know the global monetary community has done to bitcoin they 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 kind of you you know they kind of taken the rough edges off of bitcoin so because of that bitcoin is now not as much a product uh, for the rugged individualist uh wanting to live outside of the, the traditional financial system they're not it's now part of the traditional financial system. And because of that, it's going to be more influenced by overall market conditions. It is now part of the global financial community. And this leads to another reason why I am less enamored with Bitcoin at the moment because of how I feel about the overall financial market. So let's take a look at you know the status of the civilized uh, financial world. Okay, so this is the one year chart. Let's take a little closer look here. Okay, so this is the six month chart on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, you can see here the this is what the, so the market today as I'm as I'm recording this is down you know two hundred points on the day the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and you can see that the, the the market right now has been kind of now this rally we've just had here this past month. This is a sugar high. This is a rigged rally. This is a bogus. Uh, sugar high rally created. This is a manufactured um, uh, rally created by a corrupt Federal Reserve system uh, because they have decided that th they're going to either ease up their interest rate policy, maybe even reverse their interest rate policy. And the market loves that. Now, of course, inflation is going to run out of control. It's going to create hyperinflation. But, but this is what Wall Street wanted to hear. So this is the rally that we've enjoyed here uh, for this past, what, a couple of months here. But now it's kind of topping out here. So right up here at uh, the top here, this is your near-term immediate resistance on the market. And this is your uh, immediate support level on the market. And if it takes out this very important support level here at around the 35,800 level on the Dow Jones, next major support is down here. Now, the point is here, just like I think that the upside potential is 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 
out of line with the downside risk in the overall market, I think the same is true now for Bitcoin. The downside risk uh, is not in your favor at the moment. And as far as catalysts go, Okay, well, Bitcoin has kind of blown its wad, right? I mean, the really big catalyst uh, for Bitcoin was this ETF announcement. Well, that's behind it. So what's the next big catalyst? Uh, there aren't any. Uh, with the possible exception of if there's a massive, you know, influx of buying by these ETFs, uh, that could create a squeeze on Bitcoin, which absolutely could happen, okay? We could see a lot of money flowing in into, into Bitcoin. But since Bitcoin is relatively close to its recent high there, that blow off top there at 48,000, I think you can afford to to wait. Uh, I think you're gonna get a chance to, to acquire Bitcoin at a lower price, maybe nibble on it. So I don't think you need at the very least to get a grunt. Now, if you want to acquire Bitcoin just for the sake of, you know, putting a stake in the ground and, and having a starter position, I totally get it, you know, um, and I would not, you know, talk you out of it. Uh, but I don't think you should, feel a sense of urgency to get into Bitcoin right now. I think you're going to have an opportunity to get the uh, Bitcoin at a lower price. But when you think of it in terms of percentage moves, if you think that eventually Bitcoin is going to see 100,000, 500,000, a million dollars you know, per coin price, if that's what you think, it's got a lot of room to run. So you can afford to, you know, to wait a little bit. And I would use that 48,000 level as the near term, you, you know, resistance. Uh, if it takes out 48,000, okay, then you probably, then I think it's got uh, kind of a green light, you know, to make its next big push up. But since it's just had a big run going into this news, I think it's going to need time to digest uh, that news, wash some people out, you know, uh, uh, put in some kind of base and then run again. But because Bitcoin now has been brought in uh, to the civilized, you know, financial markets world, uh, it's going to be more sensitive to what the overall market does. It's, it, it's not going to, you know, move on its own steam uh, very much anymore. It's going to be, it's going to be subject to, I mean, if a war breaks out uh, out of nowhere and, and the market sells off, Bitcoin is, is going to sell, it's going to go along for the ride because it's part of the financial system now. So I want to be clear. I'm not telling you not to buy Bitcoin. I just want you to take these, these considerations uh, in mind when you are making your decision. And I just think that at this moment in time, you know, on January 12th, 2023, I think that uh, it, the downside risk is greater than the upside potential at the moment. I mean, when you start hearing, you know, the shoe shine kid talking about Bitcoin, <laughs> I get, you know, not a good sign, right? Everybody loves Bitcoin. That's kind of, you know, from a pure, you know, money making point of view, that's not what you want. You know, you want to acquire things before everyone else loves it. And now everyone loves it. Everybody wants it. Everybody's horny over Bitcoin. They've already, they already own it, right? And so uh, I just feel that at the moment, the downside risk is greater than the upside potential. Um, I think my guess is it's going to be flopping around here uh, within a certain range, not doing a whole lot of anything before it makes its next big next, next big push. So if you want to own it, uh, just fine. Just don't be surprised if you're going to be down a, a little bit before it goes up. Um, nothing wrong with that. Just, you know, just kind of steal your emotion uh, for that. Don't think that Bitcoin has to triple from here. Bitcoin just tripled uh, over the past 12 months. So it's okay for it to rest for a while. That's what it should do. So I think it's an issue of time frame. A little bit of a side note here as I get toward the end of this video here is uh I expect uh, a big financial crisis sometime during the year here. There's going to be another round of bank failures. Uh, and we're going to see hyperinflation kick in because of the Federal Reserve policy. These people are corrupt as well. These people are, if these people were truly interested in fighting inflation, they would not be lowering interest rates. The whole idea of having an easy money, monetary uh, policy is to take care of their friends on Wall Street and, uh, and the elites in, in Europe. That's what it's for. But in the process, they destroy the value of our currencies. And again, whether they're destroying our currencies uh, because they're incompetent or because whether or whether by design, okay, 
personally, I do. I think it's by design. I think these guys are on a mission to destroy uh, the, the fiat currencies. They're on a mission to destroy the value of a U.S. dollars because they want to push you into the product that they want to, you know, re. I don't want to say the word because uh, the algorithm pick it up. They, they want to redo the system, right? <laughs> and if they impoverish you uh, uh, during that process, so be it. That's fine by them. Because after all, they want you dependent on them. Uh, so in the comment section below, let me know what you think about Bitcoin. Uh, am I completely wrong? Do you disagree? Uh, please support my channel by hitting that like button and subscribe. Ed Anderson, live from Minnesota, signing out. Copy that. Copy that.